Mental strength is about improving your ability to regulate your emotions. Your definition of success doesn't have to be what everybody else is or what society makes it out to be. You can choose your own path. This is why our brain is so important. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited because this will be the first video where I do a book review. This book, go ahead, screenshot this book. This book is absolutely amazing. So this is by Amy Morin called 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do. This book, I'm gonna say it again was amazing amazing today's video will be a summary about this book and i have my little handy dandy notebook so hopefully i can multitask we shall see this will be interesting so let's start off with the 13 things they don't do and then we'll get started so number one is don't waste time feeling sorry for yourself number two don't give away your power. Number three, don't shy away from change. Number four, don't focus on things you can't control. Number five, don't worry about pleasing everyone. Number six, don't fear taking calculated risks. Number seven, don't dwell on the past. Number eight, don't make the same mistakes over and over. Number nine, don't resent other people's success. Number 10, don't give up after the first failure. Number 11, don't fear alone time. Number 12, don't feel like the world owes you anything. And number 13, don't expect immediate result. So let's get started. We will start. Hydration. Hydration is a must. The reason I wanted to do these book reviews is kind of give people an idea of what the book would be about in certain topics and subjects that they talk about, but not really go into the whole entire book. That way, if you do like it, you still purchase the book and I'm not taking anything away from the author. I definitely want people to support these authors for all the books that I review, so that's why I don't go into too much detail. But let's get started so basically before she starts all 13 reasons and basically 13 chapters she starts off with the introduction so let's start with that mental strength is about improving your ability to regulate your emotions mm -mm -mm. i think this is a really good one it requires a three-pronged approach your thoughts your behaviors and your emotions Oof, I love this one. So basically what she's saying is your thoughts are identifying irrational ones and replacing them. Your behaviors will do so in a positive manner no matter what. And your emotions, you don't let them control you. So you take control of your own emotions. Do you guys think that certain books should be mandatory in high school? like mental health books or life changing books, like finances and adult things, <laughs> because I do. And this should be one of them, this book is amazing. Okay, enough. <laughs> Sorry, the light will keep fluctuating because I'm using a window and a little ring light. And don't mind this room, because it's a spare room. And it's not really done yet, so Whatever works, right? She talks about not wasting time feeling sorry for yourself. And self-pity could provide a reason to avoid responsibility. And start by acknowledging other people's kindness and generosity and try to express gratitude daily. Oh, obviously, this is a book I'm obsessed with. I just... I love it. I love these kinds of books. Chapter two is don't give away your power. Don't give other people the power to hurt you. You have to set boundaries and limits. 
And I really like the way she laid out this book. She starts off every chapter with a previous story about when she used to do therapy for people and other clients. So she gave really good examples of trying to get her message across. So I like that she wrote the book in the style that she did or that she chose to. When you give away your power, you depend on others to regulate your feelings. How do people, like, this is amazing. This is amazing. So if someone pisses you off and does something that aggravates you and you choose to get upset because you have a choice, somebody does something to you and you get aggravated, okay, it's the, like, of course you can't avoid automatically getting upset or sad but once you recognize that you're upset and sad then you can instantly choose a different emotion once you recognize it obviously it'll take some practice but with practice you can get there don't let others define your self-worth don't avoid addressing what the real problem is you become a victim You'll be highly sensitive to criticism. You'll lose sight of your goals and you ruin relationships. That's all of the stuff she was trying to give examples with. Bullet points. Bullet points is what I'm relaying, my bullet point notes. <laughs> and you stay calm when tempted to react negatively by taking deep breaths, excuse yourself from the situation and distract yourself. It's good tips, good tips. Successful people don't allow one person's opinion to define them. Amazing. And in this book, she also gives examples of people out there who have tried their hardest and their journey of success, which again, everybody has a different definition of success. And it your definition of success doesn't have to be what everybody else is or what society makes it out to be. You can choose your own path. The last one for this chapter is it takes hard work to recognize that you have the power to create the kind of life you want to live. Basically encouraging you, whatever life you want to live, go for it because you have the power. You have the power to do anything and all it takes is a little motivation and maybe some sacrifice. You can do it. Okay, so chapter number three is don't shy away from change. There are six different types of change. First one is all or nothing, like having a baby. Once you make that change, you're in, you know? Um, number two is habit. Get rid of a bad habit or create a good one, for example. Number three, try something new, like a hobby. Number four, behavioral changes, like being nicer. <laughs> um, number five is emotional change, feeling less irritable because you have that choice and the power. And number six is cognitive, so changing your way of thinking. That is genius. I love how she broke this down. And I will also leave this stuff in the description box below. So then after that, she talks about the five stages of change, which is number one, pre-contemplation. They don't yet identify any need to change. Number two, contemplation. They contemplate the pros and cons of the changes. Number three, preparation. They prepare to make a change. Where the concrete behavioral changes take place. Number five is maintenance, where they look to plan ahead of time to maintain the change. So she lists the stages that you'll go through if you start to work on this. Chapter four, don't, don't focus on the things you can't control. This one is a good one because I feel like I struggled with this one. And I'm trying to work on it, so at least I'm aware of it. And if I'm aware of it, then I can learn to change it. So trying to control everything is a way to manage your anxiety. 
external locust believes that their lives depend on fate, luck, or destiny. Whatever is meant to be will be. And internal locust believes that they have complete control over their future. So she teaches you about external and internal locus. Which I didn't even know what that was. So that was, that was pretty cool. When you stop trying to control things, benefits are you have increased happiness, less stress, better relationships, new opportunities, and more success. Who wouldn't want all those things? Who wouldn't want that? I do. I know I do. That like that sounds amazing. Number five, don't worry about pleasing everyone. We people please because of fear and or learned behavior. So when you have grown up, you've had people in your family do it, and then you have learned it from their behavior. Just because it's a popular choice doesn't mean it's the right choice. This is good and I feel like it ties in a lot with society and how society contributes to what success would be defined as. Society likes to paint a picture and define success for us when I feel like everyone should have their own definition and it doesn't have to be what society says it should be. Number six is don't fear taking calculated risks. People often avoid taking risks. You can see why. We sometimes base our decisions on emotion rather than logic. I felt like this was a good one. Because in the book, she then goes in to talk about why we base our decisions on emotion and makes sense to me. The next one is don't get fooled into thinking that your anxiety level should be the factor that helps you make the final decision about risk. That is quoting her word for word. I think she makes an absolute good point. I don't know why I'm so intrigued by psychology and all that stuff. It's absolutely the coolest thing ever on how our brains work. It's amazing. Albert Ellis, the greatest living psychologist. Number seven, don't dwell on the past. I feel like this is something we all do. It's very hard sometimes not to, so I get that. But again, we have to be aware that we're doing it. And once we're aware, then we can work on it. People like to dwell on things, whether it was years ago or days ago. And dwelling is self-destruction, she says. Refusing to dwell on the past doesn't mean you pretend the past didn't happen. It means embracing and accepting your experiences so you can live in the present. It's like when you hear this stuff, it makes a lot of sense. But when it's not pointed out, it's like you're kind of struggling to find out what is or what isn't or what works and what doesn't. Makes a lot of sense. It's pretty cool. Chapter eight. Don't make the same mistakes over and over again. Everyone makes mistakes and it's sometimes okay to repeat the minor mistakes, but just taking the time to learn from them and there are steps to take for the unhealthy repeated mistakes. And again, I'm not gonna go into detail about everything about this book because I do want people to support the authors and buy them or listen to them on Audible or however you have access to get to them. Another tip would be increase your self-control. You practice tolerating discomfort, use positive self-talk, keep your goals in mind, Impose restrictions on yourself and create a list of reasons why not to repeat your mistake. Mm, I like this book. This, this was just a really good book. And the book was easy to read. 
I really enjoyed it a lot. I look like a ghost sitting in front of this window and this small ring light. <laughs> Chapter 9 is don't resent other people's success. So don't be jealous. When you're insecure, someone else's success will seem to magnify your shortcomings will or could become bitter or start to resent and it's so easy to look at the glamorous parts of someone else's life that we forget about the hard work that it took for that person to get there i like this one especially this one was a really good point because she points out like do you really want do you really want that person's success like if you were who does she give i think she gives um a basketball player example Oof, i already forgot where okay say they're a basketball player a professional basketball player playing in the nba and you just look at the glamorous parts their house that they get to play basketball the fact that that's their job a sport the fact that that sport is their job, something they like to do and get paid for it. But she points out, do you really want to wake up at maybe four in the morning to practice? Do you want to change your diet? Do you want to work out as many times as that person has to work out? Do you need or do you really want everything that comes with that life? You can't just look at the good things. You also have to look at the bad things. Mm, bad things isn't really the right term. Maybe, or the not so glamorous parts. And I thought that was a really good example because we, I feel like we forget, hey, even though this person does this or that, rap, sing, um, dances, plays an instrument, like what did they have to do? What did they have to do to earn that spot? Like they didn't just magically get it. And then if they did just magically get it, maybe off a of talent or whatever, they have to learn to keep it. So I think she made a really good example with that, with that one and pointed out something that we usually don't tend to think about. Don't view people as competition. Just cooperate and build people up. Define what success means for you. Someone else's success won't rob you of anything. Makes a really good point. Don't give up after the first failure. Giving up can be learned behavior. Irrational thoughts about failure may cause you to quit after your first failed attempt. Ooh, I like this one too. Ooh, was this the chapter she talked about Hershey and Reese's? Where Hershey, Hershey had his own company, he failed, and then he had to restart over. And Reese worked for him and then branched out and started his own company. Like the candy bar, Hershey and Reese's. It was the coolest thing ever. I don't know if it was that chapter or a different chapter, but that was one of the examples that she gave and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Chapter 11, or number 11. Don't fear alone time. I feel like a lot of people struggle with this one because they, feel, they might feel awkward when they're alone. But honestly, once you get busy and once you get moving, alone time is it. Best time ever. Mental strength requires you to take time out of the busyness of daily life to focus on growth. People use the excuse of staying busy to avoid their problems. Which one? Is that you? Are you, wanna, are, are you that one? Are you the one that avoids your problems? Quit doing it. Being alone gets confused with being lonely. She goes into depth about the difference between setting time for alone time and when someone is lonely. 
I love that because I have never thought of the difference. I thought that was a really good point to make. Try to do 10 minutes of silence daily so you can learn to sort through your thoughts. Then she says, when you have a long time, use it to reflect on goals, pay attention to your feelings, set goals for the future, write in a journal, and schedule a date with yourself. I like this one. Schedule a date with yourself. Who doesn't love dates? Research shows that meditation alters your brain waves and over time, your brain physically changes. I'm gonna say it again. Research shows that meditation alters your brain waves and over time, your brain physically changes. That is amazing. This is why our brain is so important. Ooh, I need concentration for this one because I cannot talk and do my eyelashes at the same time. It's really hard to do that. I just feel like I'm gonna shut my eyes again. Number 12, don't feel like the world owes you anything. This is a good one. Most people who feel a sense of entitlement lack self-awareness. Service above self is the motto. Increasing mental health strength sometimes requires you to accept what the world gives you without complaining that you deserve better. I don't feel like I've come across a lot of people who act like this, but I know it's out there. There's all different types of people out there. All different types. And number 13 is don't expect immediate results. I think I would suffer from this one because I'm really impatient. Our world and things we do nowadays discourage us from having to wait. Success is rarely instant. Success is rarely instant. Reasons why we expect immediate results. We lack patience. We overestimate our abilities and we underestimate how long change takes. Like how much time it takes. Instant gratification can be very unhealthy and reaching your full potential requires you to demonstrate willpower to resist short-term temptation. So the conclusion of her in her book says, coach yourself, monitor your behavior, regulate your emotions, and think about your emotions as to be aware of yourself, be aware of your emotions, be aware of your feelings, be aware of your beliefs. I know this was a lot to take in, but hopefully it helps somebody and was useful. This book, again, was amazing. Go get this book. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next week. Bye. Arted. Oh. Yeah, I don't know why I've been losing my voice. Oh my gosh. <sighs> what is happening? Oh, is that a good thumbnail? That's funny. Um, does anybody else just love lip gloss and they're addicted or is it just me like gorgeous like <sighs> I don't know why I bronze my nostrils but um I do to me they look uneven and they stick out yeah that's weird I don't know definitely running out of mascara for sure it's not giving me my full volume. It's not cool. It's really not a big deal. I don't even know why I'm bringing it up.